Okay, don't mind the messy workbench. First thing we gotta do before we take the jug off is um, take the power valve mechanism apart. Because this is linked down to a gear in here. So the jug and the power valve assembly links the jug and the rest of the engine together, so that's why we gotta take it apart here. So it should be just right under this cover. What the power valve does is it actually changes the timing of the exhaust port as the engine RPM increases to um, give it more power. So it's a pretty neat little device. So let's see what's going on in there. Okay, there's the power valve assembly. You can see there it moves. What this is doing is there's a slide in the exhaust port and as this moves, opens and closes the slide to change the change the characteristics of the exhaust port. So I'll just pull that apart here too. bolts back in so I don't figure out don't forget where they go. Alright and it looks like it is ready to come off. So let's grab a number 14 here. Remove the four bolts that hold the jug on and rip her off and see what's underneath. Alright. Okay, four jug bolts, take them off. tapping them because it's hard to hold the engine with when it's loose on the bench like that this helps get them off with a little bit of an impact this is going to be a tough one okay there it goes no problem just put some knee into it okay let's pull the spark Try to make it easier for the piston to come out. It doesn't have any suction holding the cylinder on. Okay. Pull these four nuts off and should be able to see an engine.
Okay. So I get stuck down. Let's give it a whack here. Let's find a board or something to hit it with. Maybe a better board than that. Sure the base gasket isn't breaking off of it. She comes. There's the piston there. Still looks brand new. To take a closer look at it later. But Definitely over its service interval, so it's a cylinder. See through the intake into the cylinder there. Oh, sorry, the exhaust rather. See the those are the transfer ports up the sides. It's what takes the fuel from the bottom of the crankcase and puts it above the piston on its stroke. Cool. Got to take this gasket off here. Take the piston off. Looking good. Okay, now get this piston out. We gotta pull the snap ring out to get it the dowel out here. Here it comes. Okay, easy as that. Let's see if I can push the the wrist pin out here. Get a push from the back. Here, let's try pushing it out the other way. Took the wrist pin out, or the clip out on the other side here. A little socket. There it comes slowly. Push that through too. There you go. That's a wrist pin. So here's the connecting rod here. This wrist pin goes through this connecting rod into the bearing here. Like that. And that's what holds the piston on. Pretty simple. Pretty simple.
the camera focus here. A little bit hard to see, but this is a roller bearing. This gets its lubrication from the oil and the fuel since it's a two stroke. So it's very essential you put enough oil in the fuel, otherwise, this, amongst other things, will seize up on you. And it's the piston. Still clean as can be. Piston has a special coating on it to stop the carbon from sticking. I forget what it is. Um, some sort of ceramic coating, I believe. Yeah, she's looking pretty clean. What I was worried about is um, hairline fractures in the exhaust or the intake side of the piston. Most likely the exhaust side because that's the side that takes the load. And um, what happened last time is one of these fractures ended up destroying the piston and shattered into a thousand little bits and went down into my crankcase here and bent the connecting rod and just did a real big mess. So I'm going to replace the piston just to be safe. There's the intake timing port on the piston. Little cross drilled holes here. It looks like these are just to reduce weight. And remember the spikes are having at 13,000 RPM. So the least amount of weight in the piston, the better.